Hi all, welcome back to day three of general angles with degrees. Next week we'll talk more about general angles and standard position when it comes to radians. Today, this week, the only thing we're going to talk about with radians is how to convert from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. Just to kind of quickly review what we've done so far is that we have graphed uh, degree measurements in standard position. We have found a positive and negative coterminal angle. And you also have converted from degree measurement to radian measurement and radian measurement to degree measurement. Keep it in mind in that degree and radians are kind of like meters and feet. They mean the same type of thing, it's just that they're in different units of measurement. Okay, we'll investigate more about radians next week. Um, just to recall that our retake for Unit 6 is going to be this Thursday at 9 a.m. on Zoom. I'll send you a document, copy of the document. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. On Wednesday evening, I'll be updating the Google Sheet um, that I have to see if you're taking it or not. If you do not respond to the Google form, I will assume you're not taking the Unit 6 test. Um, and if you are taking, you can click no on it. If you're taking Unit 7, click yes. Um, but please let me know which, if any, you plan on retaking. So this Thursday, Unit 6. Next Thursday, Unit 7. There will be no official like Google Meet asking questions that day. We'll just be doing a retake. So what we're going to be talking about today is reference angles. So by the end of the class period today, you should be able to find the reference angle measurement. Again, we're only going to focus on degree reference angles today. Next, we're going to talk all about radians. So how do we do it? What is a reference angle? Well, a reference angle is an angle, of course, in standard position, which we know what that means. A reference angle is an acute angle, okay? So a reference angle is always going to be acute, and it's formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. So it's formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. We're not going to talk about radians today, so I'm going to cross off this part right here. You'll notice that there's kind of a helpful definition is right here for how to find it, 360 minus... Those rules, I think, can be kind of confusing and overwhelming, so I'm also going to show you how to do it without having to memorize, okay? Again, the terminal side is the side that moves, and then the x-axis. So let's quickly review what a standard position kind of looks like. So if I have my coordinate plane, we know from before that this is 0 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees, and this is 360 degrees, okay? We know all that, okay? Then I'm saying, okay, let me just talk about the terminal side and the x-axis. So that means I don't really need to worry about the 90, and I don't need to worry about the 270, because I'm finding the terminal side angle measurement with the x-axis. That's it, okay? So the only numbers you need to think about are 0, 180, through, uh, 360, 540, 720, just any numbers that would fall on the x-axis here or the x-axis over here. So let's do a problem. Let's see what we're doing here. Again, we're going to do, um, we're actually going to do it over here to start. Let's do, I want to find the reference angle, okay, and I abbreviate reference angle like this. When you're given an angle, let's say of... 80 degrees. Okay. So I'm going to draw my angle in standard position just to kind of get a visual of what's going on here. Okay. So I know that my initial side is always starts at the 0, 0. That's my initial side. And 80 degrees is about eh, right here. Okay. It's about 80 degrees. So I want to say, okay, what is the quickest way to get this terminal side back to my x-axis? So what's the quickest way to get this terminal side back to my x-axis? And it has to be a cute angle. Well, the quickest way is to go back to where I came from, right? So what is the measurement from this orange? Well, it's also 80 degrees. So my reference angle and the first quadrant, remember this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4, 
the reference angle in the first quadrant is always going to be the angle measurement given. Okay. Let's do another one. So let's say I'm given, I want to find the reference angle, and I'm given an angle with a measurement of 150. So I'm given 150, I want to find the reference angle. So again, eventually you don't have to draw them out, but I think it's really good practice just to constantly draw angles in standard position. So I have my initial side, and 150 eh, is about right there. So I want to find the reference angle. So here's my x-axis, and here is my terminal side. And I want to say, what is the quickest way to get my terminal side to the x-axis? Well, it's to continue on. So I need to find the measurement of that angle right there in red. Well, 180 minus 150, my reference angle would be 130. Okay. Again, trying to get it to the x axis. What's the quickest way to get to the x-axis? And it has to be an acute angle. Always. Okay? So let's do one a little bit harder. And something else to kind of note, doesn't really say it above, reference angles are always positive. So reference angles always positive. Always, always, always positive. Okay? So let's do this one right here. Again, we're not going to do radians till next week. So we're going to do negative 130. So I want to find the reference angle of the given angle of negative 130. Again, you do not have to draw it out, but I like, I think it's quick, it's easy, and it only like muscle memory and how to draw in standard position. So I have my initial side. I'm now going to be going this way, right, because I have negative. So negative 130 is about, let's say, right here. So that's negative 130, and I want to find my reference angle. So it's my x-axis and my terminal side. So what's the quickest way for my terminal side to get to my x-axis? Well, it would be to go this way. So I need to find what's the measurement of the orange angle. Well, my reference angle would be then 50 degrees because reference angles are always positive, always, always, always positive, okay? And it's the terminal side quickest way to the x-axis, okay? So that is how you find reference angle. This right here, we're going to talk about next week. Now, you're more than welcome to try to figure out if you can um, how to find the reference angle when it comes to radians, but we'll do a lot more work of that next week. If you have any questions, make sure you log on to Zoom. This corresponds to the first part of your homework. Um, yeah, see you guys later. Have a great day.